you've mentioned kind of advice for startups. Is there, in general, whether you do a startup or not, do you have advice for young people today? You're like an example of somebody who's paved their own path and were, uh, I would say, exceptionally successful. Is there advice, somebody who's like 20 today, 18, undergrad, or thinking about going to college or in college and so on um, that you would give them? I think uh, I often tell young people, don't start companies. Is it not, don't start a company unless you're prepared to make it your life's work. Like that's a really good way of, of, of putting it. And a lot of people think, well, you know, um, this semester I'm going to take a semester off. And in that one semester, I'm going to start a company and sell it or whatever. Right. And it's just like, what are you talking about? It doesn't really work that way. You should be like super into the idea, so into it that you want to spend a really long time on it. Um, is that more about psychology or actual time allocation? Like, is it literally the, the fact that you need to give 100% for potentially years for it to succeed? Or is it more about just the mindset that uh, that's required? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, any, I think, yeah, you don't want to have, certainly don't want to have a plan to sell the company right. um, th like quickly or, or something where it's like, or it's like a company that has a very, it's like a f big fashion component. Like mm -hmm. it'll only work now. It's like an app for mm -hmm. something. Um, so yeah, I, that's, that's a big one. And then I also think something I've thought about recently is I had a job as a quant at a fund, uh, for about two and a half years. And part of me thinks if I had spent another two years there, I would have learned a lot more, um, and had even more knowledge to, to be where new to basically accelerate how long Numerai took. So the idea that you can sit in an air conditioned room and get free food or even sit at home now in your underwear and make a huge amount of money and learn whatever you want and get, it's just crazy. It's such a good deal. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's the case for, I was terrified of that. Like a Google, I thought I would become really comfortable in that air conditioned room. And that I was afraid that the quant situation is, is, I mean, what you present is, is really brilliant that it's exceptionally valuable, the lessons you learn, because you get to, you get to get paid while you learn from others. If you see that, if you see jobs in, in the space of your passion that way, that it's just an education. It's like the best kind of education. But of course, you have, from my perspective, you have to be really careful on not to get comfortable. Like get in a relationship, then you buy a house or whatever the hell it is. And, and then you get, you know, and then you convince yourself like, well, I have to pay these fees for the car, for the house, blah, blah, blah. And then, and there's momentum and all of a sudden you're on your deathbed and there's grandchildren. Uh, and uh, you're drinking whiskey and complaining about kids these days. Yeah. So I, you know, that I'm afraid of that momentum, but you're right. Like there's something special about the education you get working at these companies. Yeah, and I, I, I remember on my desk, I had the, uh, like a bunch of papers on quant finance, a bunch of papers on optimization, and then the a paper on Ethereum just on my desk as well, and the, the white paper. And it's like, it's amazing how much, how kind of, and you can learn about, so that, that I also, thought, I think this like idea of like learning about intersections of things. I don't think there are too many people that know like as much about crypto and quant finance and machine learning as I do. Mm -hmm. And that's um, a really nice set of three things to know stuff about. And that was because I had like free time in my job. 